Hey everyone, being around these newer construction projects, they're using less and less fiberglass and going over to this, spray foam. But I want to find out, compared to the traditional fiberglass, how does this burn if a fire starts in the wall? These are 2 by 6s By code, you only need 2 inches of closed cell spray foam. This is what this is. See how hard it is? If you were to spray this over sheetrock in an attic, you could stand on that. Now this is a mixture that requires four inches to be up to code in this area. See, it's a little bit malleable. It's a mixture, half, half of it's closed, half of it's open. This right here is fully open. It's like a sponge. You can damage it easily. It doesn't put up with a lot. It's meant to be behind sheetrock while the mixture and the closed cell are meant to be exposed. If you're in a cold climate, closed cell is the best thing because if it was open cell, moisture would get behind this and cause condensation and it would cause mold because open cell, no matter how thick you put it, no matter what anyone tells you, it's never going to be a vapor barrier. This is a vapor barrier, great for up north, Open cell is better for in the south because in the south you're trying to cool the building so the condensation would be outside anyways where it doesn't matter. Up here it matters. Closed cell is a lot more expensive. Now this weekend I went to the Home Depot. I wanted to build a full scale 8 foot tall wall to be able to do this demonstration but I can't believe lumber is so expensive. They wanted $16 for each stud. I wasn't going to do that. It would have been like a $500 project. So I found this old bookcase and we're going to do a little demonstration on this. This is 8 inches and by code you only needed, because this is mixed, I didn't actually fire up a spray gun, that's just the great stuff which is a mix. When it hardens it's a mixture of both and by code that would probably need about 4 inches. So it's like double because it expanded a lot. In the real world, expansion doesn't matter because you just shave it off to make it perfect for sheet rocking. Right here, got some insulation board. We got about four inches of it in there. The next thing we have here is wool insulation and the typical fiberglass. In this demonstration, I think the fiberglass is going to put up best. Of course, the paper is going to burn, but glass does not burn. It may melt if it gets hot enough. And this right here, you just do it as, as fire block. In the, world, in the real world, that would be red. But red and the typical white stuff, they're both exactly the same thing. It's just so an inspector can see it easier. So we're going to go light these up on fire with a blowtorch to see which one's most flammable. So in the real world, the biggest danger is this is 15 amp wire with a 15 amp plug. But you have a lot of idiots who are going to try to plug in a 20 amp air conditioning unit or a space heater or even two space heaters at the same time. And a lot of times before that breaker reacts, this line is going to start getting really hot. If you ever have a situation where you pull out the prongs and they're hot enough to burn your skin, that's a serious problem and that shouldn't be plugged into that. That is more of an older building problem. Someone will plug a space heater in and it'll cause a fire inside the wall. When this is covered with plaster sheetrock, it wouldn't just go up in flames, it would smolder for a while, generating more and more heat, then the entire outside of the wall would go poof. All right, here's the back side. So this would be the siding of the house. That's just a big piece of plywood, plywood outdoor paneling, which is very expensive these days, but I was able to get a scrap of it. Yeah, if we were to do this with a full 8-foot wall, I was expecting to pay $500 with today's prices. I wasn't willing to do that. This will work just as well. So this is what's inside the wall. Got the spray foam, insulation board packed in this one, and sealed on the edges with the great stuff. This one right here, fiberglass insulation. This also produces toxic smoke, Romex. But this is older, before they called it Romex. All right, we're going to move this to an area where it can just burn itself out once it's going. This... All righty, everyone. Got everything here set up. That other stuff is just for show. That's going to be backed off before I get this going. I'm going to have two blow torches in my hands, light them on fire, and step back. And see which one 
burns fastest. And highly doubt we'll need any of the extinguishers. Those ones there are for only paper and wood materials. That one over there is the ABC one. I don't think we'll be needing any of them. It's not dry out, so let's get this going. Alrighty, here we go. I'm gonna light the two on the right, which I know are less flammable first. Or at least try to light them. That one's not burning at all. Alright, that one does not burn. That's a good choice. Now, the Owens Corning fiberglass, like I said, just the paper is going to burn. Fiberglass is not flammable. It's glass. Alright, so definitely the spray foam is the toxic one. Really toxic. Making plumes of thick black smoke. That one refused to burn. It looks like it kind of melted to a sense where I had the torch. This one right here is really dirty and toxic too, but nothing compared to the spray foam. The Owens Corning is almost completely burned out. And there goes the electrical receptacle starting to melt. That was only thrown in there for show. Oh, we got some of the Romex starting to catch fire. That produces toxic smoke. That's why it's all blowing away from me. And, okay, some of the framing is starting to catch fire over where the spray foam is. The Owens Corning has completely burned out. Nothing is happening over there. Uh, maybe a little bit towards the top, but that's just the cardboard or the sheathing on the back, which is a vapor barrier. Oh, look at this one. You can see all the way back to the exterior paneling. Oh, that was interesting. Really interesting. This is starting to throw a lot of heat. Actually, the spray foam is actually starting to go out. It's that paneling crap that's really going. Look at it go, that panel stuff. No, actually that took off because the exterior stuff doesn't go to the top and it's got like a wind turret. Uh, I gotta back off, this is really bad, hot. We can really see the wire in there burning now. Yeah, the framing is all caught on fire in the middle bay. But it's partner next door. Nothing's happening. Wow, I can feel the heat way back here too. All right, we're not gonna waste any extinguishers. We're just gonna wait for this to completely burn itself out. It's not near anything. And it looks like the stuff that's going to burn is just about already there. It looks really dirty right here, but honestly, look at the sky. It's dissipating quite fast. It's not like it's putting a big cloud visible for a far distance.
this bookshelf actually worked out perfect for doing this really liked it okay so both forms of fiberglass over here held up extremely well the traditional one with the paper burned for a little while the other one could not get it to catch on fire it just started melting a little bit the insulation board proved to be the most flammable you can see it melted and there's like a puddle of it burning the one on the left the spray foam insulation is not quite as flammable as the other but it's there and why I know it's not as flammable because you can see the bottom this fire has not spread to the bottom portion of it the reason the big bulk of it isn't burning is because the outside layer of spray foam is charred and it's having trouble making it deep into it to actually burn the rest of it look at that that is just cool look at that electrical plug oh it's melting the plate is melting at least i don't see it's amazing the blue box is not melting yet it's holding itself to the heat amazingly the framing is not caught on fire that inferno you saw a couple minutes ago completely burned out the framing's not on fire wow and that fire block worked good because between right here and here the fire block it didn't make it through that other place because it easily could have fire followed that rubber wire into the other All right, looks like our fire is about to burn itself out. Okay, and we'll just leave this overnight. And in the morning, when it completely burned itself out, we'll bring it to the transfer station. The transfer station makes you pay more money if it's building materials compared to if it's regular household trash. I'm just going to tell them it's a science project. Then we can throw it in the regular trash at a smaller fee because that's basically what it is I'll just say it's my science project yep almost out very little flames all right do I have like a stick I'm gonna try to tear some of that right here and maybe if I expose the rest of the foam that's behind that protective layer of char it'll Get itself going again. Got to find a stick somewhere. Oh, it's like a big shell. Look at that. Oh, there's fire inside it. Look at that. I thought it was burned out. No, it's burning on the inside. That stuff is like napalm. Don't want to splatter that stuff on yourself while it's burning. Okay, okay, everyone. We're going to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to use the water extinguisher since I can recharge it at home for free. Wow. That went out so fast. Oh, got a Oh, we actually spread the fire by doing that.
and the aftermath. Look how it made these fibers all along the wall. See these sharp fibers of plastic? Here's the electrical wire. No, nope, not hot anymore. There's a melted electrical plug. So you can see this stuff slightly melts when the blowtorch hits it. But this is still a type of fiberglass. Fiberglass or wool bats that kind of material and here's the typical fiberglass as you can see the fiberglass itself does not burn but it acts like a filter so it turns brown from just stuff passing through the house including smoke definitely glass insulation is the best for holding up against the fire while obviously the two plastic ones turn into a giant inferno, imagine if the whole house was insulated with that, especially if a fire was to start in your attic, wow. That is a big inferno and it would spread super fast. At the end, you see, I think it would have gone out completely if I didn't stir it up and expose the inner parts of that foam. Now I'm gonna scoop out that big chunk of contaminants. Uh, this, this doesn't need to go to the tr dump. Just gonna throw it in the burn pile. Everything bad is removed from it. So, other than the major fire hazard of these two, these two are the best energy savers. Spray foam does a better job than anything at sealing every little gap. It'll expand to every little crevice. It's the best insulation you can put in. It's not eco-friendly. It's a big fire hazard. But... It's also the most expensive one, but if you live up in the north, especially if you have like vaulted ceilings, that's the, th that's the kind of stuff you want to have in there. It's much safer when you have sheetrock, because sheetrock going over the outside would prevent it from just exploding like that. That's why I use the example of in an attic. In the attic, it usually would have vents on the sides of the house where it would be able to pull air and feed itself. But still, an attic is still an enclosed space. It would not be that big. As soon as it started producing smoke, it would begin to snuff itself out. While these older ones still do a good job, they're not recommended for vaulted ceilings. So any day, I think I would go with the fiberglass unless it was a vaulted ceiling. Spray foam is the best for that stuff. In the south, I guess it doesn't matter. But up north, you're going to have ice dams if you use fiberglass in a vaulted ceiling and that's the truth all right now this is for any of those spray foam contractors who want to say the professional stuff won't burn like the great stuff all right everyone say goodbye to the science project it'll be gone momentarily